Hello, everyone. Uh, we're here for another um, broadcast of uh, an edition that I would like to talk about tonight is, is about um, access to justice in Quebec and Bill 96. And today uh, you're going to get on this um, video blog, so to speak, a perspective of a Torontonian and specifically and a Canadian in general who respects and supports Francophone rights, but has had certain experiences with the um, Quebec legal system, which changes uh, a one's, uh, which provides a new perspective on what exactly is going on in Quebec. Uh, specifically, many of us um, outside of Quebec, many of us who are not uh, Quebecois, um, believe that Bill 96 is about protecting and preserving the French language. Um, myself, before having confronted or the Quebec legal system, so to speak, I too thought that, you know, much of these um, language laws and specifically the new Bill 96 was about protecting the French language. But now having experienced again the Quebec legal system, I now have a, an appreciation that that's not what the substance of um, Bill 96 is. And before I go further, I would like to indicate that um, I fully support Francophone rights um, outside of Quebec. So I support Francophone culture, the protection of Francophone identity. I believe that most uh, the overwhelming majority of Quebecois, Quebecers, including French-speaking Quebecois, Francophones, support and have a shared values with the rest of Canada concerning basic civil rights, um, human rights, and concerns for social justice, fundamental values of fairness in society. Uh, what I find it unfortunate is that there's a very relatively very small clique in Quebec who has supported a Bill 96, people who are linked to Premier Legault's office who supported this bill. And this bill is being cloaked as a prote uh, protection of the French language, but it isn't. And I'll tell you what my experience is. My experience of the uh, so-called uh, efforts to protect the French language is that um, I had won a um, human rights case in the Quebec and went through the, um, taken to the human rights tribunal. And having reached the human tribunal at first, you know, we, um, dealing with, you know, the, there was a respect for my, you know, rights that I, mean, I was being communicated in English. And then the lawyers, uh, DHC advocates decided uh, in last spring that they were not going to no longer going to speak in English, even though they're completely bilingual, they were not going to speak in English anymore. And then they would start to have banter with the, with the judge, um, uh, Catherine Pilon of the Quebec Human Rights Tribunal, purely in French. Um, to take us back on the, so, on the complete unfairness of this, uh, many years ago, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that um, Francophones outside of, you know, Quebec um, specifically had the right to a free court interpreter. So now, as thanks to that, well over 100,000 hours of, of uh, free court interpreter services being provided in Ontario specifically to um, Francophones as well as um, additional services to other minority groups. Now, in my understanding of our of a society and a nation that Canada represents, um, if francophones, which I fully support, are having the rights to free access to corp interpreters, if they have the right outside of Quebec, isn't it logical in a free and democratic society that supports fairness and equality that um, people who are have to go through the Quebec legal system shouldn't anglophones? English speaking people, as well as, you know, desirably other minorities 
languages groups be able to um, uh, have a free court interpreter service in case the um, lawyer, opposing lawyer, as francophones, decides that they're going to speak in French. But apparently, this is not the situation going on right now in Canada. Right now in Canada, we have a situation where outside of Quebec, francophones have the rights in, in civil cases, in criminal cases, and administrative tribunals, the right to a, a, a free court interpreter. And in Quebec, Angle, you know, I was denied that access, you know, to, to such court interpreter services. Um, and then they started just conducting and, and you know, the, the judge, Catherine Pilo and the HCC advocate starts talking about me, starts saying all sorts of stuff in French. And how is somebody who doesn't speak French going to be able to defend themselves in court if they are denied um, access to in, interpreter services. And this just happened spontaneously, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, it seems to me that I've never heard of anything like this happening in any type of, of, of a free and democratic society anywhere in terms of, you know, the, uh, the court thinking it okay that you're going to, that, that the judge, that, you know, it's okay for a judge and the opposing lawyer to speak in a language that you don't understand and cannot defend yourself and they can make decisions in another language that you have are not privy to. So this is what's going on in Quebec. And so what my, the purposes of my communications today is to support, is to invite Canadians as well as any international interest and support out there to support um, um, my, uh, our efforts to uh, for a uh, appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada, leave to appeal, so that we can uh, get the Supreme Court of Canada involvement to assert the rights of non-Francophones who have to be dealing with the Quebec legal systems, because the Quebec, the Supreme Court of Canada, in fact, already indicated in in, in more than one ruling that and uh, pursuant to the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, that um, that uh, you know all official, both official languages group have a right to uh, court interpreter services, and that should and that is reinforced by a respect for the rights of minority languages also having rights to a court interpreter service. And but this is being denied in the Quebec system as they begin to assert the whole concept through Bill ninety six that Quebec is the common language. And so in my view, from my experience, this Bill 96 is not about protecting the French language. It's about dominating. It's about one group who identify, one group, and particularly not Francophones in general, but one clique trying to use law in the name of protecting the French language to dominate and repress and subvert the rights and of another, other groups to have access to justice and to defend their rights. Bill 96 and related language laws are there ostensibly, officially, to protect the French language, but are specifically uh, designed to say to people who are not French speaking in general, and many people who, you know, maybe French speaking, but are marginalized from marginalized communities, that you are not one of us. This is our justice system. We don't care of the merits of what you have to, of your case and your infringements that you've experienced concerning your rights. We are going to speak French to make sure that you, non French speaking member of our clique, are not going to have any chance and any hope of asserting your rights to us. That's, so that is what is going on in Quebec. It's, go, it's, a, it's an effort to, to subvert and oppress people uh, that have nothing to do with the preservation of the French language. I, in my humble opinion, having known many Francophones, I, you know, it's my experience that Francophones in general, French speaking people in Quebec and outside of Quebec support principles of justice and it to, to the overwhelming majority of Francophones would appreciate that 
having access to and court interpreter service is a basic right and that uh, having a judge and the opposing lawyer speaking in a language that you don't understand and making decisions that you cannot participate in is a violation of basic fundamental concepts of rights, freedoms, and access to justice. So the purposes of this video is to um, get Canadians aware of the kind of, 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 of complete um, scam that is going on with this Bill 96 and, and as it pertains to fooling uh, an, an effort to fool Quebecers specifically and Canadians in general into believing that it's about protecting the French language, language when it's not about protecting the French language, it's about denying um, access to justice as and, and access to basic rights and freedoms and to inst and, and instilling an, uh, a sort of uh, identity that we are the chosen group in the society, us clique, and you people who don't speak our language uh, are not to be recognized and are not to be respected. And if, you, and if you don't happen to speak our language, too bad for you, we don't care of the merits of your case. And the fact that, uh, you know, this judge, which, which started my whole efforts, our whole efforts in terms of trying to make this, uh, this appeal to the Supreme Court, um, Catherine Pilon, her, you know, I imagine you going through a human rights tribunal and the judge does not respect your fundamental rights as recognized by the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. She didn't care about that. She was just going to, you know, she, she doesn't care, you know, who, you know, it's not my problem, you know, access to court interpreter services, according to her view. She was just going to speak in French with the lawyer about me because I later got the banter interpreted and found out that they were speaking right about me, you know, in the court and, and the, and making it, you know, impossible for me to, to defend my rights in the court because I could not understand what they're saying. And this is the type of scenario that undoubtedly many, many, many people who are confronted with the Quebec legal system, both people who live in Quebec and people who are outside of Quebec, this is the reality that they need to experience because if in Ontario, if if they if the government government Ontario website which says that 100 Fifty thousand hours of court interpreter services they provided to francophones and other services to non-francophones. You can imagine that that number of people hours being denied to um, non-francophones in Quebec, you know, is probably comparable. So the experience that I had in um, with the, and I'm having with the. Um, oppressive nature of the Quebec system as it pertains to Bill 96 and access to justice, um, there's no doubt that this is the environment which is has, has confronted and is confronting non-Francophones in both in Quebec and, and outside of Quebec. And this and the and what I'm asking for is a support but from moral support, any kind of support you, that Canadians can have, people from Quebec and across Canada, as well as any international support in spreading awareness about what is going on in Quebec, how what is going on in Quebec with respect to access to justice is inconsistent with, um, the, the, you know, the uh, you know democratic uh, constitutional democratic societies uh, and the values, and even. Many dictatorships would recognize the right of somebody to basic um, language interpreter uh, services. So even if, if dictatorships, you will find this access to being provided if you are, go to a country and you don't speak the language. And even if it's even not a democratic society, they even m much of these uh, societies that we don't consider democratic would still uh, recognize uh, you as having a right to at least understand 
what is being said and be able to make your input in terms of the decision. But what we have dealing in Quebec with respect to the basic denial of those freedoms in the supposedly democratic province that Quebec has represents is fundamentally atrocious. Um, we, we cannot leave that to stand because you can rest assured that what we have de dealing with, once you have a, an environment which denies basic access to justice, you're going to have a lot of other, uh, uh, you know, uh, oversights when it comes to basic principles of, of uh, fairness, decency, and recognition for rights and, and, and liberties and freedoms. The, you can rest assured that 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 the type of experience where you will you will deny somebody interpreter services in the court to be able to and you're going to start having banter amongst yourself that you know that a litigant can understand who's there for human rights purposes if that can go on in a human rights tribunal in Quebec then you're dealing with a serious problem now if you click the link below um, you'll also if you're interested in, in donating to our cause, then I invite you to click the link below and you'll see an article that's much more extensive about uh, the treatment and about the Supreme Court of Canada cases that the Quebec legal system has violated in denying the rights of non-Francophones to be able to understand legal proceedings and being able to participate in legal proceedings. Uh, so we, we believe that um, support for our legal appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada can be the basis of a broader discussion on the lack of integrity that Bill 96 represents and an even broader discussion on fairness and inequity which is ongoing, not just in Quebec, but the rest of Canada. So again, once again, I invite anybody who is curious or interested in a perspective that they probably won't get on CTP, CBC, and, and a variety of other news sources, of what Bill 96 represents. If you're interested in the, the, in what is in a, the fundamental denial of rights, that that you know that is going on and taking place with respect to um, Bill 96, and how it specifically pertains to the experience of a particular case that, uh, that I'm asking Canadians and other people, interested uh, people abroad, to ch check out and look into. Um, this is a important case. Um, I know that there are other legal cases that have been associated with uh, Bill 96 as well. And we wish them support and moral support as well to those particular efforts. But our particular effort with respect to uh, Bill 96, the unique aspect of it is that it poignantly shows uh, the underlying and fundamental unfairness and, and ridiculousness and outrageousness that Bill 96 represents with respect to people who don't speak French, who are trying to access their rights. We have a situation right now that if you are cannot speak French to go in a Quebec courtroom, all the lawyer can, has to do to, to make sure that you don't win a case and that your case it becomes stalled and that you and that you is to simply speak French uh, and engage in banter and judge in French and decide things without your participation um, and then rule against you because you cannot participate in a legal proceeding and, and defend yourself if the judge um, and the uh, lawyer or lawyers are going to communicate in French and deny you access to the type of court interpreter services that is available to francophones and and outside of Quebec. And the, again, the outrageousness, a part of this is that the Supreme Court of Canada says they, that, that people in Quebec are entitled to the service and the Quebec court system continues to ignore the, 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 their obligations 
under Supreme Court of Canada decisions to recognize the right of court interpreter services. So we have a situation that though Quebec gets billions of dollars from the rest of Canada for transfer payments, many of that money is being raised by people who don't speak French. You know, it's fundamentally shocking that they are going to treat Canadians who are, who are who, in this sort of manner, an elite, again, not Francophones in general, but an elite in Quebec who's, uh, who's completely has, apparently has so much contempt for non-Francophones that they are going to ignore um, Supreme Court of Canada decisions uh, uh, that says that they are required in the Quebec legal system to provide these court interpreter services that Francophones can get outside of Ontario. So our effort is to draw the att attention to the Supreme Court of Canada to this fundamental unfairness and to expose at the same time the fundamental inequity that Bill 96 represents. We need the support. It is vital that we get support as from as many cases as possible. Otherwise, the, it is likely that the Supreme Court of Canada will just simply ignore this case because and sweep it under the rug because they don't think that, well, Canadians aren't paying attention to it. So we don't want to confront the the complete, um, you know, ridiculousness and outrageousness going on in Quebec. We don't want to confront the fact that they are ignoring our decisions, even though we're the Supreme Court of Canada. We are going to just ignore that, sweep this under the rug, and that's that. And then Quebec can do this thing. And then, you know, Francophones continue to have rights outside of Quebec and and, and, and Anglophones and non-Francophones will continue not to have the rights in the Quebec legal system. And that is a fundamentally, um, you know, unethical, wrong, and against our sense that we are a united nation. If we are united Canada, one nation, then the Canadians are entitled to equivalent rights across the Canada. We can't have a society where where we have two official languages groups, one of those official languages groups has complete recognition of their rights, and the other language groups in the in the, in the province dominated by a, Frank, a francophone population and the, an elite that doesn't recognize and respect rights are going to deny those rights and to deny the uh, idea of Canada being an officially bilingual country with fundamental rights. We as Canadians, if we as, as Canadians are concerned about the the, the 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 devolution of Canada into one nation for Quebec and doing its thing and one and the rest of Canada and Quebec you know getting transfer payments the elites to spend dollars on wh wherever you know at, at, at the same time ignore the rights of, of people from the rest of Canada who are trying to avail their rights in in the Quebec legal system that is a fundamentally sense that's just fundamentally unfair. And with your support, we can get the attention of the Supreme Court of Canada to this fundamental atrocity and start to draw public spotlight on the fundamental hypocrisy and scam that Bill 96 represents. Again, it's not for protecting the French language. It is it's about, you know, oppressing and displacing people who are not francophones and saying that you don't belong, you know, we don't have to listen to you, we don't care about your rights. That is what Bill 96 is about. It's about denial of rights to non-francophones and it's not about protecting the French language. It's not about protecting the French language at all in my experience of the Quebec system. And I, again, I invite you to click the link below, check the link below and share your comments and we look forward to any support of comments or any support you have to the link below, which is a detailed article on the continued denial of the rights of non-Francophones in the Quebec legal system. Thank you very much and look forward to your comments and your support. And with your support, we can make a difference and get the attention of the Supreme Court of Canada so that we can have a, 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 so that they will recognize our, our rights, recognize the public importance 
um, of our particular case because most cases in the Supreme Court of Canada uh, go before the Supreme Court of Canada don't get recognized unless they are can be are regarded as being important to the public and we believe that the rights and denial of the rights of of non-francophones um, in the Quebec legal system uh, it affects a lot of Canadians um, and uh, this is something which is definitely in our view publicly important with your support with your support we can show the Supreme Court of Canada that um, you believe that is the case as well and let's make a difference and start supporting fairness and rights for all Canadians um, uh, in the affirmation of our Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Thank you very much again for watching.